How's it going, RJ? Thanks for doing this. Uh, if you could, just take me through the decision to opt out last year and then the decision to come back. Was it ever a huge consideration maybe trying to look somewhere? Um, no, I, I hadn't really considered that. I wasn't really thinking about that at the time. I just had been dealing with a lot as far as opting out uh, academically, health-wise, just dealing with injuries, playing with injuries. And then um, just with Muschamp and when T-Rob and Muschamp got released, it just was kind of hard. So I just felt like that was the best decision to make at the time. Josh Kendall. <clears throat> Were you ever at a point where you thought you might not play football again, whether you transferred or not, or, or did you – did you always think you were going to come back to this team? Um, I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't come to a point where I didn't feel like I wouldn't play football no more. But I did just kind of have a gray area as far as what my future, where my future lied. But um, with Coach Beamer coming, I had already had a rapport with him, a relationship with him in high school, and so he just kind of set me down, set my mom down, just expressed like him wanting me to be here, and I wanted to be here, and so we're going on from here now. In that gray area, was there anybody else you talked to, any other source that you used to help you, you know, get to a better place or make a make, make a final decision? Uh, no, sir. You talked to Coach Muschamp or Coach Robinson since they left? Oh, yes, sir, I have. I've talked to Coach Muschamp and Coach T-Rob, actually. I talked to T-Rob probably about a week or two ago uh, just because he's been like a mentor in my life beyond football. He's on um, – Helped me and my family just get understandings of things, move forward with things. He's helped me grow up as a man. So I always have a relationship with him and Must Champ, and I'll always be grateful for them. What was their advice to you in this situation? Um, just do what I feel like is best for me. Um, they just, they see me grow like I've grown up since I've been here, and they knew that whatever decision I made, I felt like it was best for me and my family moving forward. And so they just encouraged me to do whatever. Dick Cox. Can you talk about Coach Beamer has brought back a lot of the South Carolina greats that are in the NFL and all to be a part of the program, some on staff. And can you also talk about the influence that Coach Day's had with the off-season program and the competitions? Um, just the figures that Coach Beamer places around us as far as guys that have built a legacy here at South Carolina is good for us because it's contagious. Um, so they always they tell us about the things that they did, the methods that they relied on for success. And so we try we kind of try and replicate what they told us that they did. And um, Coach Day has just been a lot of buy-in, um, definitely just a lot of buy-in. Like everybody loves Coach Day. We love the workouts. Like we come in here and we attack it every day, and it's just a whole different feel like coming in here. Colin Taylor. Yeah, RJ, now that you're back with the team, what's that process been like getting back with your teammates and how have they kind of re-embraced you now that you're opted back in and working out with these guys? Oh, uh, I mean, it, it's just been like we've never missed a step. I mean, it, it's been fun since I've been back. It's been fun being here. I mean, everybody has fun. We've all bought in. I mean, it's just a, it's a good time being in here regardless of the work. Eric Boynton. Go ahead, Colin. I'm sorry. Uh, and now that you've just kind of been back in, and you're one of the older guys now, you guys have lost a lot from the secondary last year. What's your role in terms of mentoring and helping these other guys, these younger cornerbacks and defensive backs in that room? Um, the emphasis right now is just bringing them along, um, having versatility and building depth. So, I mean, everybody is playing everywhere just to kind of develop a feel for the defense, for the type of football player you are and what you can bring to the table and just um, what your best position is. So just right now, we're just bringing the young guys along and then just being and like getting our P's and Q's done as far as the defense. Eric Boynton. Jay, was there even a few uh, you know awkward days when you decided to come back? The fact that you opted out last season, were you worried about how your teammates would accept you back, or were there any awkward moments right at the start, uh, the first few days back? No, sir. There wasn't any more awkward moments or nothing like that. Michael, and uh, any story or any story or one anecdote you can uh, tell me about uh, Coach Day? He's a pretty pretty animated guy. When we get a chance to talk to him, you hear from all your teammates. He's a you know, really kind of a wild guy. Uh, any any kind of one speech or one moment that you witnessed from Coach Day that kind of illustrates his? Uh, just, it was one day, I think it was before the workouts had even started. It was when he first got taken for the job and he just came and talked to us and we had a team meeting. 
and he just was expressing how grateful he was, and you could see that he was genuine in everything that he was saying. So that made me buy in with him, like just from the jump. And uh, he just talked about love, like loving your brother, like pre like bringing each other up through hardship, and just th like things of life that your parents would teach you, and things like role models show you throughout your life. He came and he he said, and he showed, he's been showing us since. Michael and Anna. <clears throat> RJ, you're, you're talking about uh, opting out and kind of what was going on with you in that moment. I mean, what was, what were some of the, I guess, physical issues you were dealing with and what was just emotionally, what is it like in that moment with everything going on with COVID and uh, the coaching change and all of that? I mean, how did you handle all of that just emotionally and mentally too? Um, I've been dealing with a hip pointer that I, I still am dealing with right now, honestly, um, just getting treatment for and different things like that. But that was really a, what I had been dealing with at the time. And it just, it affected just the way that I played, the way that I kind of shoot, I just walked like throughout the day. Um, but just as just COVID, coaches getting fired, being injured, worrying about the future and different things like that. That's just kind of where I was with that at the time. And how did you how did you end up spending the time away? And was that time away good for you? I mean, how how did it? I guess just how did you respond to it? It was hard just dealing with that time away. Just still watching my boys play, watching football. Period. But I just spent that time committing myself to working harder, getting my like bringing my grades up, making sure that I stay eligible, um, making sure that my grades are good. Like you feel me to make my mom proud. So I just focused on making myself better in different areas as well. I mean, just to kind of take my head off of it. Cause I mean, it's still, it's depressing just to not be able to play football. So I'm appreciative that I'm here, that spring has started. Like I'm just loving everything. Do you feel like you grew from that? Did you feel like you achieved what you set out to do that you, you did grow from that experience? Definitely, yes, sir. Hail my grand Hey, RJ, I think you may have kind of answered this earlier, talking about bouncing around between different positions amongst the secondary. But uh, what, what are some of the things that, that you're doing that you can share uh, about your role and, and the types of things that, that you're doing on the field? Oh, um, right now, I just, I'm really at safety. Like, I've just, I've been playing both safeties, um, learning both safeties. But um, also, like, I mean, I'm willing to take reps anywhere. Coach White and Coach Beamer, they know that, that they could just place me anywhere. We all, we all, we've discussed that before um, me coming back. But um, right now, it's just my focus is learning both safeties, knowing the ins and outs of both safeties, and then encouraging the other guys that are behind, like behind me at Strong and um, behind Foster, just to kind of learn, like being able to learn both sides and um, also learn nickel and corner. With, with the off the field with, with Coach Moore, uh, Derek Moore, what, what's it been like getting to know him and, and what kind of uh, personality has he added to, to y'all's support staff and those types of folks? Demo, that Derek Moore, that's Demo, that's my unk. I always I call him unk. Like he's been, he's very impactful on me and my development, and just me as a person right now. Like just the life lessons that he's taught me since he's been here. Like we have a close relationship, like very close knit. Like I talk to him almost every day, if not every day, it's every other day. Um, so just him being here, like his company and things like that. Like that's it definitely lifts my spirits just with him being around. John Del Bianco. Hey, RJ, you had mentioned your relationship with Coach Beamer during your recruitment. I'm curious, what did you know about him, obviously, before he was your head coach, and what have you learned about him since he is your head coach now? Um, coach Beamer was the same person, the same person he was my junior year, sophomore year of high school. He's the same person now. He's just very family-oriented. He's very transparent in everything that he's seen, and when, you, when he tells you something, you could really take it to the bank. Like, what has he brought to the program, in your opinion, in the three three months he's been here? Obviously, you've you've been around Coach Muschamp and what he instilled in this program for for three years. So, what's different now with with Coach Beamer running the ship? Um, it's just a whole lot more buy in. It's just a lot more buy in with um Coach Beamer. It's just everybody knows that we had a change in staff. Like it's an entirely new staff. Everything has changed. So, just the ability to get guys to buy in early and everybody has bought in and everybody has stayed that same way. And so I feel like it's, it's definitely good things happening right now. Thank you. Mike Cuba. RJ, with how things ended for you personally last year, do you feel like, number one, you have to prove anything to anyone? And number two, what did you learn about yourself just being away from the game? Um, I don't necessarily feel like I have to prove anything to anybody but myself. 
Um, just because I put that target on my back as far as I know, I made that decision for myself and I have to work myself back from that as well. Um, one thing that I learned about myself is that I can't be without football no matter what. Um, and one thing I learned that I felt like in some ways I really should have finished, I could have finished and just put aside the things that I have been dealing with. But that's just something that I have to live with from now on. But I know um, I just learned to stay more committed, just to go harder. Like every, I go harder in everything that I do, like, cause I know anything, it could be taken away. And that's why I mean, I took myself away from the game by opting out, but it could literally be taken away at any time. So I really just appreciate everything that we do. Josh Kendall. Schematically, RJ, what are the main differences between this system and the one y'all were running the last three years, four years that you've been playing? Um, just, I mean, it's already a difference just because we run a 4 2 5. Um, so, like, our linebackers are more nickel. They're, they're kind of more hybrid as well. They're involved more in coverage, too. Um, but it's just a lot, like, we have a lot more, I wouldn't say freedom, but it's just, it's more things that you could check to. It's more things that you could adjust to, adjust with as well in, in this defense that we have now. Help, help me understand how it, how a 4-2-5 base would be different than just play a nickel. The, 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 when, when you were a nickel last year versus your 4-2-5 base this year, what's the difference? Um, the safeties are well way more involved in the run fits this year, for one. Um, then reading pass, so it's just we, we read our keys more. And um, being with the keys that we read, whenever we get a certain read, we are allowed to do different things just as far as helping the rest of the defense because a lot of times the safeties in our defense don't have any work. And work is just like an assignment to carry out. And so it's just be like sometimes you can be a free player and help out other players on the defense. Thanks, RJ. Lou Jack. RJ, what have you seen from some of the younger guys, the sophomores now, like Jordan and uh, Tonka? know they're D linemen, but what have you seen from them uh, so far early on and in the off season? Um, just like I was talking about earlier, just the buy-in, just the commitment, embracing it. Like those guys, they never, they never come in the building frowning, like their energy is contagious and um, they come in and attack every day. Eric Boynton. RJ, can you give me a little bit of uh, insight into what kind of a guy Jalen Foster is, just personality wise, maybe a little bit about him off the field? Jalen Foster like a brother to me. Um, before Jalen had assumed the role that he's in right now, he was my roommate and things when we were traveling. And um, before he had even switched to safety and he was playing corner, he was still the same dude. Like He's been the same dude this, this entire time. He's just real down to earth, real funny. But at the same time, like he knows like, when it's time to punch the clock and go to work, he's one of those main dudes bringing guys along with him, making sure that they're working. You, you were a guy, obviously, that was highly recruited out of high school. What does it kind of say about uh, Jalen and the fact that he went to a started off at a small school, basically didn't play for three years, but wanted to play at Carolina in the SEC, and then here he is uh, starting some games the end of last year, and now in line to possibly start again. He's had a a pretty he's had to be pretty patient and work really really hard, maybe harder than a lot of guys. That just shows just the kind of person that Jalen is, just how he puts his head down and he works. Even sometimes when he gets the short end of the stick, he doesn't say anything. He won't address it. It's just he just attacks. He attacks the next day. He attacks the day after that. He just has the same mindset. I'm um, coming in the building, coming in every day. Thank you, Hill McGranahan. RJ, I was just curious to to know about some of the the new guys y'all have in the secondary, uh, whether freshmen. JUCO guys, transfer portal guys. What's it been like getting to know some of those guys, and and, and have you talked to any of any of the others who are who are going to have to wait to enroll until in the summer? What's it been like getting to know some of them? Um, I haven't gotten a chance to really speak to anybody that hasn't come in yet. Um, but as far as the guys at Spalding, Marcellus, um, Ford, Bartholomew, like I'm, I'm like I'm really good with all those guys. Just guys, that, even though they play other positions, other than Ford, um, just kind of talking to them. Letting them like seeing it, what they know so far about the defense. Um, they work hard in the weight room, Marcellus and David, because I see them. I, they were in my lift group, um, so those guys they come in and they attack it and they get after it too. And plus, I feel like those guys kind of have a chip on their shoulder just because they're they're kind of unknown right now. So they're coming in here trying to prove themselves, and that just shows it, and they show it just by how they work. How important is it for for the secondary to to be in tune with each other, communication wise, and and have 
you know, good relationships off the field and, and, and that kind of bond. Is that a, a key part to the whole? Very important, um, just like it is across the board with all other position groups. And that's one thing that's an emphasis right now under Coach Beamer is just familiarizing yourself with people on the team that maybe you haven't spoken to before. And I'm um, just building bonds that really last and that are real genuine. The last question goes to Eric Boynton. Yeah, RJ, what's maybe impressed you the most about uh, Marcellus? You said he was in your lift group. What kind of maybe give me a little insight into him? And uh, is he a guy you feel can, uh, you know, come right onto the field maybe in the fall and, and, and be a major contributor right off the bat? Yes, yeah, so I feel like that he can come into the fall and be a contributor. And one thing that impressed me about Marcellus is just his numbers. Like, he works very hard in the weight room, and his numbers show that um, he attacks it. And you can just see it. You see it. That, that's the kind of person that he is. He's also another guy, when it comes time to punch the clock and put in the work, that he's one of the guys that's going to do it.